Now here's an interesting funding twist. Thanks to improving one quarter cent sales tax projections, I'm actually recommending more current expense funding for Durham Public Schools than they requested. An increase of $244,880. Next year's appropriations are $115.8 million for current expense and $1,370,000 for capital outlay. This amount does not include what we pay for debt service for schools. Due to the sale of bonds this spring, our debt payment for school-related construction and renovation will increase by $2.9 million for a total of $28.9 million. Per pupil funding for DPS next year will increase by $120 per pupil over the current fiscal year, $3,165 per pupil. Again, Durham County provides hundreds of dollars more to its school district than any urban county in North Carolina. For the last several years, school funding decisions have been stressful, to say the least. Your meeting with the school board on Thursday should be one of the most pleasant meetings we've had with them in years. They should be pleased with their new budget. Goal two of our strategic plan is our Healthy Durham Goal. You've already seen how we're emphasizing wellness among our workforce and having a good time while doing it. Equally serious work is also being done in our community through our public health department and our health partners. Public health employee Mel Downey Piper explains in greater detail. So Durham County is actually doing a lot of things really well. Um, North Carolina told us to look at the top 40 issues in terms of health. We looked at Durham's numbers, North Carolina's numbers, and we're already meeting some of the state's 10-year goals. We have fewer adult smokers. We have fewer residents reporting being exposed to secondhand smoke. We have more kids that are getting access to dental care. And we have less unintentional poisoning. So those are really positive things that are happening in Durham County. There's a few things that we do need to work on in Durham County, though. Um, cancer is the number one cause of death, followed by heart disease. Our rates of homicide um, and rates of AIDS are a lot higher. Durham is, has the fourth highest HIV rate in the state, so that's something we want to look at, and there's a lot of racial disparities. We also want to talk about obesity and chronic illness, and we know that obesity is related to things like heart disease and diabetes um, and certain types of cancer, so these are all really important issues that we want to focus on. We know that 33% of Durham County residents are uninsured, um, and we know that the people that are most likely to be uninsured are people of color. Um, we know that it's usually younger people. Um, a lot of them may be working, so there's a lot of people impacted by this problem in Durham County. We just finished our Durham County Community Health Assessment, and to do that, we spoke with a lot of residents. We surveyed them, um, we looked at a lot of the data, and we also held community listening sessions. And then we asked them what one thing would make Durham County a healthier place to live. And they told us um, healthier eating and nutrition, um, exercise, and also access to medical care and community unity. So we formed action groups to address all of these health priorities. So we have community members, we have providers, all these people coming to the table to come up with solutions. So we heard from residents that they need access to fresh fruits and vegetables. We know there's a lot of food deserts in Durham County, which means people don't have access to fresh fruits and vegetables in their local communities. So to solve this, we want to encourage people to do more gardening in their own homes, to start community gardens, and also start more farm stands and mobile farmer markets. We're really worried about overdoses in this community. So to solve that, we want to find a place where residents can drop off their unused or expired prescription medications in a secure location. So we're going to be starting some um, drop boxes where residents can do just that. So on August 1st, there's going to be a new smoke-free ordinance in the county, which is really exciting. Durham County has become a leader in this. Our residents are already smoking less and are already being exposed less to secondhand smoke than in other communities, but we want to make an, an even stronger impact. So starting on August 1st, um, residents and kids will be protected from secondhand smoke. We are particularly concerned about the mental health needs of some of our youth, particularly Hispanic students um, and gay and lesbian students. So we really want to focus on improving um, mental health services for those groups. The county has invested $320,000 per year for the last three years to support Project Access of Durham County. We're just starting a brand new initiative um, where adults can have access to more dental care. And so it's going to be through Project Access of Durham County, which already serves uninsured patients. 
So the county strategic plan focuses on health and well-being for all, which is exactly what we tried to learn about with the community health assessment and with the health department's priorities. So we're all aligned, we're all working on the same things, and we all think it's really critical that Durham County's um, citizens are as healthy as they can be. Next year, I'm recommending an even stronger partnership with the Duke Health System. A Durham Health Innovations Committee, chaired by Dr. Bill Fulkerson and me, has been developing a strategy over the last two years to connect Durham County residents to appropriate health care. The effort has a strong measurement component, and if successful, could be replicated across Durham. 35% of all Duke patients come from Durham County and the health system is donating $60,000, among other resources, to the effort. For this initiative, I'm recommending the addition of three public health nurses who will provide well-child screening examinations to school children and their siblings in three elementary schools. Now, these schools are located in areas where families have had difficulty accessing health care. The purpose of providing these examinations is early recognition of conditions that might have a long-term chronic impact on health and school performance. The information will be shared with the child's primary medical provider. Our share for the funding will come from the proceeds we have on reserve from the sale of our home health license. This initiative is exciting and offers real promise in helping residents who have little or no health care to become healthier. Goal three of our strategic plan is our safety goal. One of your priorities, which you shared with the Durham Crime Cabinet, is to help our citizens communicate with local law enforcement. Sheriff Mike Andrews agrees and speaks briefly about several ways the Sheriff's Office is helping to improve communication between Durham County residents and the Durham County Sheriff's Office. Well, the crime rates in uh, Durham, uh, like any other city, uh, throughout the country in uh, state, uh, North Carolina. Recently we've had uh, our crime rate uh, drop uh, from last year and uh, I believe that's due to uh, citizen engagement uh, being more alert and our officers being proactive in uh, their daily duties uh, carrying out uh, their job function. We've just recently uh, launched our Facebook website. We uh, launched that off uh, in uh, March and that's been a very uh, proactive tool for us in engaging with the citizens uh, in order to get information out. Our community watch program is very active. We have, we have uh, kind of kicked that up a notch or two and we're trying to engage uh, the uh, Durham City PAC units to coincide with our Durham County community watch programs. We've been meeting with the community leaders in regards to uh, crime that has occurred in Durham and uh, through my office, we've seen the need to allocate more officers to help uh, combat uh, whatever activity or crime there here is in Durham. We have uh, assigned officers to uh, the Violent Offenders Task Force with the Durham Police Department and have just recently assigned another officer with the uh, Safe Street Task Force with the FBI. The Raids Online will give the uh, public the opportunity to go to that website and they will be able to pull up uh, geographically whatever area that they live in or any area of Durham County and see what activity is occurring in that area. Uh, I strongly urge the public to uh, utilize uh, that tool and, and it assist us and if anything is going on to uh, provide us with information that goes on in their community. We want to be engaged uh, and informed of what occurs in the community. And if something does not uh, seem right, I would rather for the public to call our office and advise us uh, something does not look right and let us send an officer out to uh, investigate. Well, the strategic plan calls for uh, more transparency. It calls for uh, better working relationships, being proactive, engaging our citizens to let uh, them know and uh, exchanging of information for us to provide our services to the citizens of Durham and the community. Sheriff Andrews points out how closely we're working with the Durham Police Department on crime and how we're using new technology and social networking to engage and inform our citizens about crime in their neighborhoods. Again, the key to better law enforcement is close collaboration with our citizens. 
Our Sheriff's Office rolling stock has not been replaced for the last three years. We cannot go another year as many of our vehicles are beyond our replacement policy threshold. Next year, I budgeted sufficient funding to replace 35 vehicles, many of which have gone two to three years beyond their expected life. I've also consulted with the fire chiefs who represent the five tax districts that span our county. Fire service is not uniform in our county, and we are not coordinating increasingly expensive fire resources efficiently. Next year, we have agreed to work together to analyze fire service and determine if some consolidation of our tax districts would enable us to more efficiently use and distribute our firefighting resources to improve service to those citizens who live in unincorporated Durham County. I don't know if we'll see lower fire taxes under some form of consolidation, but I do think we have a good chance to help our citizens pay lower fire insurance premiums from it. It's time to give merger of county fire service close scrutiny and I commend our fire chiefs for agreeing to partner with the county to evaluate how we can improve fire service in unincorporated Durham County. Goal four of our strategic plan is our environmental goal. We are leaders in many ways when it comes to our commitment to protect and improve our environment. We were the first county in the state to tackle the problem of greenhouse gas emissions by jointly approving the Durham Greenhouse Gas Emissions Reduction Plan with the City of Durham. It was the beginning of our Environmental Sustainability Initiative, which led to the employment of Tobin Freed. Understandably, Tobin's time has been devoted to changing the culture of the city and county governments to think more proactively about what we can do inside our organizations to reduce our carbon footprints. Much of her time has been spent engaging employee committees and working with contractors to improve energy use in our facilities. But the most significant way to reduce our carbon footprint is through our private sector. Next year, City Manager Tom Bonfield and I have recommended an additional position to engage the private sector in many of the same ways we've engaged our own organizations. Taking the next step means engaging hundreds of organizations about best practices to reduce the carbon footprint and make real progress to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in Durham County. I've also added two new positions, one in the Health Department and one in the County Engineer's Office, to implement Jordan Lake and Falls Lake rules that are now fully in effect with various deadlines approaching. We've kept you abreast of the broad implications these rules will have, and it will require a substantial pledge of county resources to honor the duties and responsibilities that have been delegated to us by state rulemaking. Though costly, these rules certainly help us achieve water quality goals in Goal 4 of the Strategic Plan and point out our commitment to strong environmental stewardship. Finally, I'm recommending additional funding for our open space and farmland protection programs. In FY 2011, we appropriated $850,000 for open space and farmland protection. Last year, we reduced this appropriation to $300,000. This reduction has significantly affected our ability to implement these land conservation plans. Next year, I'm recommending we increase this appropriation from $300,000 to $500,000. We are the leaders in our region in both of these areas. However, we are behind where we had hoped to be in 2012. Now keep in mind that we fund this initiative with an annual appropriation while many counties, like Wake County, use bond funds that voters have approved. I like our strategy better, and I'm proud to report that we are debt-free in implementing our open space and farmland protection plans. Again, this demonstrates our strategic commitment to environmental stewardship. The Strategic Plan's Goal 5 is our accountable, efficient, and visionary government goal. This year I've really challenged our staff to fully incorporate this goal across our organization. I want to address a few of the items in our budget related to this goal. Right now we spend almost $60,000 across our organization publishing scores of telephone numbers in yellow, blue, and white page directories. Next year we will publish only eight telephone numbers, which are the most frequently dialed, and use part of the savings to add a call taker to the Tax Administration Call Center to assist in routing them. The Tax Department's number, 919-560-2000, 919-560-2000, 919-560-2000, 
0300 will become the featured number in the published directories and calls coming to this number will be routed to the appropriate department. This is a cheaper and far more efficient way to handle the flood of misdirected calls we receive every day. All of our call takers will be trained for a new customer service initiative that will be implemented next year throughout our entire workforce. We will begin this training with other call takers in our departments, as well as those employees who personally attend to inquiries when citizens appear at our facilities for assistance. This initiative teaches one major principle, two ears, two eyes, and one mouth. Use them in that order. Listen to and observe your customer. They're trying to tell you something. It's only when they've told you what they want that you can give them the help they need. As I thought about how we could be more efficient, I began to examine our building security contract. I recommend eliminating the security officer in this building on September 30th and reducing the number of security officers in the Human Services building on January 1st from seven and a half officers to four and one quarter officers. The savings will be used to station greeters in our administration and human service building lobbies to help the thousands of citizens who appear in these facilities every year. We need to put our face on customer service. County customer service agents, three in the human services building and two in the administration building lobby, will greet visitors and will be available to answer questions, provide directions, and even escort citizens if necessary to their requested destination. In our strategic planning process, our citizens strongly told us that we need to better establish our brand. Next fall, we will launch our new brand, which is being featured for the first time in this presentation. Our new logo and county color theme will begin to show up on stationery, business cards, vehicles, and our county website. We're in the final stages of developing our website theme and appearance. Over the summer, content will be finalized and the site will be tested to make sure the pages render quickly, the content is correct, and the dead links are removed. We will ensure it is a smooth transition that in no way interrupts citizens' access to our website. The Strategic Plans Goal 5 highlights transparency, efficiency, accountability, and great customer service as high priorities. This will require a huge organizational change that involves modifying the culture of our organization and training our employees to reflect the values that you want to see in our organization. It will require an additional staff member in our Human Resources Department. As an organizational development consultant, Commissioner Howerton understands the importance of having this employee to implement and ensure these initiatives. This position is critical to the success of much of what I've outlined around this goal. I'm very pleased with this budget. It is tightly aligned with our strategic plan, it includes several new initiatives, provides more school funding than DPS requested, and doesn't include a countywide property tax rate increase to pay for anything, including increasing debt for capital improvements, rising fuel costs, and employee raises. On a personal note, our strategic plan challenged me as a manager to think differently. I resisted it at first, but today could not embrace it more. I'm convinced the only way to achieve our goals is through a highly focused strategic planning process. This process of producing our strategic plan required me to reevaluate how I was trained to view and run an organization. I'm a better manager today for having gone through it. It is now going to require that our organization change too. We will be a better organization because of it. And most of all, our citizens will receive better services from it. Everybody wins here. Finally, I want to challenge you as a board to consider one more change. Like my early resistance to the strategic planning process, some might push back at this recommendation at first, but I honestly believe from my 38 years of experience in both city and county governments that this change needs to happen in our community. It's time for one unified government to serve Durham County citizens. We are 12 years into the 21st century and still using a 19th century form of local government. Today's Durham is a 21st century community. 
and deserves a local government that uses 21st century thinking to serve its citizens. This represents new thinking for me too. And I've long opposed consolidation because Durham city and county governments for the most part do not do the same things. But if there's anywhere it could and should work, it's here in Durham. We have a new economy that behaves very differently than when this community studied consolidation of city county governments in the late 1990s. Durham's not the same Durham we saw then and the two local governments that serve it are not the same either. The last four years have required the city and county to rethink much of what we do, why we do it, and most importantly how we do it. And while there are still some small efficiencies that remain to be gained, short of major service eliminations or service consolidations, significant savings can only be realized by combining the two governments into one. Why? Because consolidation forces efficiencies that will never occur as long as we continue to operate independently. If you stop and think about it, you can honor your strategic plan by seriously considering this challenge. Consolidation is more efficient and accountable. Here in Durham County, we are known and respected across the country for outside of the box thinking. Initiatives we've launched over the years that were questioned by skeptics are best practices today. Consolidation will not only help us achieve our vision for Durham, but also help us achieve every goal that our strategic plan so passionately embraces. Please don't allow politics, the disappointment over the process employed the last time it was studied, or simple fear of the unknowns associated with the idea at this point to dismiss it. It makes more sense today than it ever has, and I encourage you to place the item on a future work session agenda for further discussion. Copies of the recommended budget will be available in the clerk's office and the county manager's office tomorrow morning, as well as in the reference sections of the main library and our four regional libraries. We will also post my remarks, tonight's presentation, and a copy of the proposed budget on the home page of the county's website tomorrow morning. The website address is www.durhamcountync.gov or it can be found through Google or Bing by typing Durham County Government in the search box. The public hearing for citizens to weigh in on the proposed budget will be held on June the 11th at 7 p.m. in this room. Commission work sessions are scheduled for May 31st from 9.30 a.m. to 3 p.m., June 4th from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m., June 12th from 9 a.m. to 12 noon, and if needed, June 14th from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Final adoption of the budget will be placed on your June 25th meeting agenda. All of these meetings will be held here in the BOCC chambers. I look forward to working with you. Thank you for allowing me the time to present my recommendation.